Here we go. This is a iPhone 6 Plus repair review and just replacing the cracked screen and digitizer. The main tool that you need is this Pentalope screwdriver. That's the one that releases the screen from the case. The other ones you can make shift different tools to pull the screen out of the case and then you need a really small Phillips screwdriver. Other than that, you can makeshift other stuff, but this one right here is the Pentalope. I think it's the P2. And that guy, you cannot do it without it. I bought a nice kit from uh, iFixit. It's a pretty nice kit. It's got a magnetic case. Um, it has a little tray with all the little squares. Um, I like it. It's a nicer finish on the screwdriver. I'm a mechanic, so I, I'm a little bit of a tool snob. I like this. It feels good. Um, and also has a couple other tools. This um, pry tool and this stick right here. It's another pry tool and some tweezers. Is and a knife? No, it's just a, a thin pry tool. It helps get the screen loose. Eee, look at that. So, yeah, so here we go. Uh, she said the speaker was malfunctioning. The, this is the ear speaker, so um, we're going to go ahead. We ordered this from Repair Parts Plus also. We're going to re replace that also. So the first thing that we got to do is um, take these two pentalope screws out. Um, what do you call them? It's called a pentalope um, screw. So it's a five point. Um, I don't know if you can see the tiny little five point. It's a very, I, I think it's unique to Apple. Um, that's a oh, small one. Yeah, I know this is with. this is the bigger one. Maybe you can see it. Oh, let's see. I don't know. You guys see that? So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and uh, remove those screws and try to line up everything on the tray in a manner that you don't mix it up. So these ones, they're they're unique. So. Um, they can't be mixed up, but there are a lot of Phillips head screws that are long and short that you want to keep um, track of. You want to keep them in the position that they came out of. Um, so, okay, so now um, the easiest way to pop this screen loose is, is if you don't have any um, cracks on the glass here, then your suction cup will grab hold pretty easily. Um, the kit that I had uh, also gave a little sticker to put over there so that you could get suction if you did have cracks um, I, This one did not come with that. I don't believe so the first thing we'll do is remove the screen and Test it. So first let's turn this on make sure it works So there we go. It does work. It powers on um, now we're gonna go ahead and oh, well, Let's make sure it, it moves everything is functional there so we're gonna go ahead and power this off. We will go ahead and remove the screen. So you just get your little deal on there. See, I can pull and lift up the edge of that. Then get this, I like to use this little tool to start off with. And be careful you don't wanna damage the, um, the case, the metal part, but you just go through and pull. Then uh, they give you these little plastic picks that they work pretty good to get in between after you get it popped up. Just pop it loose. And that's good on that side. There you go, that's popped up. So now we can just pull that loose. And there we go. Now, be careful you don't want to pull on this because the um, if you look right here are the um, strips, the, the wire strips for the digitizer and the microphone or the speaker and the camera that are all in this area right here. So um, we'll be swapping over that stuff as we, as we go along. You have to replace that. It doesn't come with the digitizer. So this plate right here has to remove so then you can pop loose your connectors and then the screen will be free. So these are the screws that are important to keep in the right order. So I just put that one down in the corner. That 
one up in the top corner. If you look close, you can see the difference of lengths. See that um, that's longer, that's shorter. And um, all the reviews that I've looked at say if you put the wrong screw in the wrong place, you can um, damage the board and um, cause your phone not to work anymore. So we're not gonna we're gonna do our best not to do that. Uh oh. And my magnetic screwdrivers picking up the other pieces, so I'm gonna be careful with that. And the last one it's stuck stuck to the connectors. And There's just, glue on it. Yeah, there are little um, little pads. I think they may maybe like little heat sinks or pads to keep um, connectors. So now these are pretty easy. You know what? <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people use a lot of different tools. What I found is the little flathead screwdriver is the best. It, it's sharp, it fits right in underneath the connectors. Um, for me, pops them right up. Pull that one up first, then this one. They go back together in the same order. There you go. Whoa, there's four uh, of them? <clears throat> now the digitizer, this is the digitizer, but it also has the home button down here that we have to remove. The speaker and the camera are under here we have to remove. And that's pretty much it. And you also have to take this top plate off and swap it over also. So these connectors just push in? <clears throat> yeah, they just they just pop in. They're like little, uh, little Legos. That's the, all the other guys have said that have done this. Um, yeah, just pop in like Legos. There's there's another one down here that connects to the button home button. So everything is really replaceable. It's pretty easy. Under here is your battery connector. Well, it's actually under here. And then you pull this screw, this screw. And I don't remember if you have to pull this one. I think you have to pull this and this. Pop this loose and your battery disconnects. So, um... Which, Just, one, which one disconnects your battery? See, you can see the little strip in here. It goes to right here, and then you just pop that up. It disconnects your battery. Um, last night when I did the repair on my other phone, I plugged everything in and it wasn't working. I, I got pretty scared like I broke my phone. Um, and I so I went online, sort of panicked, like, not really. I'm like, whatever, I have another phone, and this is just, I'm... I'm just trading over to the iPhone platform. So almost felt like, oh, maybe it's not meant to be. But uh, I went online and did a little research and was told to disconnect the battery and reconnect it, let it reset, and then plug it in, see if it works, and it did. So I was, uh, I was happy about that. So the first thing we wanna do now that we have this off, before we go ahead and swap everything over, we wanna check and make sure this digitizer and everything works. So. It will work without the camera and the speaker and the button. Um, and so we would just take and plug it in. So if you look. It has all four connectors still? No, this one only has two. Oh, this, you have to swap and over and the and other okay. two. So we'll just look and compare like which connectors are which, right? So they line up like this, one, two, three, four, right? So which ones are these? So this one's gonna be that one right there, right? So then what about this one? Where does this one go to? Is it the same or does it? This one, this one goes to the top. So let's find out which one that is. That's this one here, right? So they, these guys are pretty small. So you just wanna sort of get it on there, move it around, and then it just pops right in. You, be careful, you don't wanna um, be too aggressive with these because they are really tiny little um, connections and you don't wanna mess it up. So just, if it's not popping in, I would recommend double checking, making sure you're in the right spot. Now, so now I'm gonna go ahead and power it on and it should come on. There we go. We got the screen, it lights up and looks good. So let it go turn on for a minute and then we'll make sure that it functions before we swap everything over so there we go we know that the digitizer works um, everything powered on everything's good so we're just going to go ahead and power it back off turn the power off and disconnect it 
and then we're going to do our swap over everything else. And so now we know everything works. So now we're safe to go ahead and swap everything over. Otherwise, if it didn't work, we would swap it over for no reason and waste our time. You can do it in different steps. Like you can take the button off first or this off first or the plate off first. Um, I like to go from the bottom up. So that's the way I'm going to do it. So like, like I said before, these screws are, are multiple different lengths. So you just want to make sure that you line stuff up and put stuff where, where you can remember where it's going to go. We can take the home button out. I mean, you got to be really careful because this home button has adhesive on the other side of it that holds the adhesive or holds the home button down. So this, this is the connector here for the home button. Just pop that up and that this guy is glued to the base or to the to the screen so you're going to do the same as you do up here there's other there are quite a few pieces that are glued to the base you have to um, pry them up so you're going to be as gentle as possible because you don't want to break anything and a bunch of tiny tiny pieces and electrical stuff but see that's that's loose now you can pull that up now I'm gonna go ahead and push from the other side and also try to just pull pull the adhesive loose off of this home button. Without without damaging it, you want to try to get as much of the adhesive off as you can. So see how that popped up? Now it's gonna come straight off and try not to get the adhesive dirty so that it'll stick back to the other piece. So I'm gonna set that right there. That's loose. So now the home button's free. And actually you do have to take the home button off to get the plate off, right? You see this screw right here? The home button is held on, or the, this plate is held on by that screw. So you gotta take that off to get the plate off. On this plate, there's eight screws. There's this, this screw on the bottom, this screw on the top, and then three on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap back over to my Phillips screwdriver. It is a triple zero. Um, and I'm going to place these screws in my in my drawer in my little um, tray. tray here. The bottom one here, all six side ones here, and the top one here. Um, because I did notice that all of the side ones are all the same. And I'll just bunch them all together. It doesn't really matter which one, what way they go in. And you have to pull the adhesive up off of this one here. So I'm going to swap back over to my flathead. And just, you got to be really careful to get underneath this. Oh. So see, and then you try to try to keep the adhesive as clean as possible because you're going to stick that back onto the new digitizer. So we're going to set that over there. So now the next step is to pull the speaker, <clears throat> the ear speaker and the, um, the camera, front facing camera and the, uh, there's a couple sensors and stuff up here. I'm not sure exactly what they are. And this is uh, I did watch the iFixit, the, the iFixit website uh, tutorials. They were really good, straightforward. Also, last night I watched the um, You Repair It Online video. That was pretty good too. So we're going to pull this sucker up. And then the, the speaker right here is going to pop right out. Let me get my other screwdriver. I'll just use this. I think they call these guys a spudger or something like that. So this, this guy's gonna go in the garbage. We have a new one right here. I'm gonna throw that in there. Open it up. And we did get this from Repair Parts Plus. Okay, so now we got that loose. Now that's the front facing camera right there. 
Now these are the front sensors. I'm not sure. I think it might be a light sensor and um, so they are just sort of snugged in there. So those popped out. Now if you look down here, this, this guy right here is glued also to the, there's a strip underneath this little rubber piece that holds in the mic, the um, ear, ear speaker. Um, you just gotta get under that and peel up the adhesive also. And if you look on the new one, that there is this is the only place where there's new adhesive on, on the new one you pull up this little blue tab and that will reveal the adhesive on here that goes underneath this uh, this rubber piece also swap over to my trusty little flathead screwdriver it's a nice little thin one it's got a little, nice little blade on it and we're going to pull that guy out right there if you see there's a little notch that uh, alignment notch and get underneath that first and just um, boom see so that is see these that's the front facing camera uh, I don't know what kind of sensor that is but these two sensors here and then the wire strip for the speaker these just press on to the new speaker the four little springs here and it's actually just a compression fitting so the the plate pushes down on the top of the strip here if you look and they just push together the screws hold it down so um pretty cool so that's that's basically it we are done with the old digitizer so um, nothing else in here transfers over on mine I did notice that he doesn't have them on this one but on mine it did have a couple rubber rubber pieces small tiny little rubber pieces that fit over here over these knobs I don't know if this has been apart before or what but um, this one didn't have it when I pulled it off so now we're gonna go back together put the new digitizer over here and just go back together in reverse so first thing we have to do this is going to um, stick to the adhesive part and straighten it out make it flat again um, then we're going to get under here and pull this little um, protective tab to pull the sticker pull it loose from the adhesive line it up in there try to get it as straight as possible I don't think it it matters that it's perfect um, there's no connector there so I just but I like to do things as good as I can so I'm gonna, if you watch here you can see the little tab there I'm gonna push it down onto the tab and then all down and attached it's onto the adhesive and we're good to go now this is a little um, a little tricky right so this one has to go it's the third connector in the con in all of the setup so it goes there right so we're gonna go ahead first you lay down the sensors and push them into place they they go pretty easy they just push down snug into there then I had a little trouble with the speaker last night and just lining it up it was it was a little bit um, tough to get into the into the rubber of the speaker, but I think let's see there it goes. It's in there. So lined up. Make sure the the screw holes line up. Then I'm gonna slap. Let's, oh, see there it goes. Popped right back out because this guy wants to push it out. But if you can get it in there, then. Oh, excuse my hand hold it down pull the camera back over and then you want to make sure it lines up these guys got little 
little tabs there that it, that it goes into. So we're going to hold that down. Try to make sure it's lined up properly. And then we're going to take a good little hole down here. And get it over the top. And like three old little Chinese kids probably put this together. Oh. Yeah, dude, it's pretty tiny. So now this is an important part. We have to make sure we get the screws in the proper place. If you look at the screws here, these two are just about the same, but I, I think that that one's a little longer than that one, and that one's way short. So you just gotta make sure you get them, get all the screws in the right places. Um, so. Very a, importante. Yes. So I have heard. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this guy on the Phillips screwdriver. And uh, get it started there. I'm not gonna tighten it down all the way until I get everything lined up. You can sort of let that loose since that's holding it. Put that on there. That is the nice thing about these this this set. I noticed I think the other set is magnetized too, but it does make it a lot easier having it magnetized. I couldn't imagine doing it without magnetized tools. It would be very difficult. So there you go. Now I'll get the, the flat one or the shorter one. And put that sucker down to Okay, now I'm gonna pick it up and just make sure that it's all lined up and now I want to get the plate back in so all of this goes underneath there and line it up with the top screw then once it's lined up and the screws are lined up we want to go ahead and push this guy back down into its position there is a notch right here that is, is sort of the guide for that so once you get it down in there it's pretty set you know you didn't uh, you just want to push it push the adhesive back down make sure that it's it's back on there once you get the um, connector on there you can push it a little harder have my eight screws here to attach the um, plate. This is the top one. I and same with these. I'm gonna put these in loose. Make sure I can get them all in. Put the top one and then the bottom one. And then once they're all in, and the holes all line up, and then I will tighten them. How many are there? There's eight. So the top, bottom, and three on each side. These three on the each side, they are all the same length and they're very short and small. These clips right here are where the screen snaps into the frame. And so this just all lines it all up. So what's the hardest part of this whole job? The hardest part is this, this upper part here. I the connections think. or the camera? Just the, the camera and the sensor and all that stuff, getting it all lined up. You have to, you know, hold down, put the, the speaker in between the two strips and then put the um, bracket over the top of it. And it's, I mean, it's not extremely difficult, but that if I was to rate the hardest part, that would probably be the hardest part. If you can change your own oil, you can do this? Ah, uh, no, I wouldn't say that. You can do a timing belt, you can do this? Eh, maybe. I, if, but if you have big sausage fingers, I wouldn't recommend messing with something like this. <laughs> but like Bungie's any- garage is now in the iPhone repair business. <laughs> now we're gonna put the home button back in. So this is, this is a delicate part. You're gonna make sure you get it lined up and centered. So it's a oh look, there's a little little fuzz on there. I want to get that off. It might cause 
problems with the fingerprint reader. That has an adhesive behind it still, so that sticks. And then I took my little, um, see how it's a little wrinkled there? I'm gonna try to straighten that out and get it all stuck back to the to the plate so that um, it can be sealed as, as good as possible. So there you go, that's in. So now we're gonna take and push over the connector, snap it in just like a Lego. Now I'm going to take the plate. Now I noticed on this plate there's a little um, a little nub right there for the button to I guess it it pushes against and maybe it's the stop for the button. I'm not sure the logic behind it, but uh, sort of cool. They put the little nub on there, so it's either for um, the indicator or the button push or whatever it is. Uh, so we're gonna push that sucker back on there. And get our screws. Got that tight. Okay, now that I got everything tight, I'm gonna go back through and make sure all my screws are tight. Everything's together. Just, I don't wanna over tighten it because it's very small, fine threads, and probably can spin those out fairly easy. But um, just go through and snug it up. Don't want those suckers coming back out. I did notice that they had a little bit of a, a Loctite type of uh, material on some of them. This you get, get to, to number them when you first start? This one has to go underneath that one, see? Um, this one was sticking to that one, and so it seemed like they were the, the cables that are tight together, but this one is supposed to go underneath that one. So that's that was the problem. I'd, I don't know if you can really number them. The, they are pretty small. I don't want to mess, put anything on them, cause any kind of heat or anything. Hey, you can fit them. Are you you know, it's connected. And get this one connected now all four are connected and we can put our cover back on start in the bottom corner does it matter which one on these screws yes it does if you look look closely um this one's longer. I, I think these four might be the same, but this the top right corner is longer for sure. I always just try to line them up with the way they came off so that if my chance oh, are, they're different, different length than, um, than my eye can see. And since they are so small, I don't want to take a chance. I just put them right back where I got them from. And aside from the, um, the screws on the these th these six, I know they're all the same length, and um, you have good eyesight for this, huh, Dennis? You know what? I was trying to look at the the connectors on the one that I did, and I was I got a magnifying glass out and everything, and uh, they're they're hard to see, man. They are hard to see. I don't know that they put them together by hand. I think they might be put together by machines, but who knows? Where are these? Oh, those are the two bottoms. Mm -hmm. So, so now this just slides into the the gap right here. I do notice that where it was dropped and cracked the screen, that's a little bent. So um, I don't know if we want to mess with it. Let's try. Let's see if the screen will go on without messing with it, because um, I don't want to mess the tolerances up. It's back together. We can test it now, fully functional. Um, before we put the last screws in, just because so it's on so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up here and I'm gonna adjust the um, brightness to verify that it lightens up so it does um, looks like the color is decent I can't see so there you go camera boom camera is functional Let's see, uh, that's me, that's John, Bundy's Garage. Oh, okay, there you go, you got a phone call. Here, see, see. what sounds the same. 